welcome back to Alaskan Ballistics. So glad you stopped by. Today we're going over my top 10 firearms for bear country. Why are these my top 10? Well, these are stuff that I would actually carry for bear defense in bear country. So let me just say that this video is more of a thought exercise and I am not advocating that you go purchase any of these guns or ammo right away. Many of the firearms are unavailable at the time of this uploading anyway. I'd also like to mention some honorable mentions. The Desert Eagle, good power, really heavy, has some reliability issues with springs that you need to change out. Lever actions also in 44 Magnum or 357 Magnum. They have great ballistics out of a rifle, but still not quite a rifle cartridge, so why carry the weight of a rifle if it's not going to actually have a full rifle power? First, we're going to start with some honorable mentions. 357 Magnum, not quite enough power, very reliable in bear country. The right rounds will do the trick if you place the shot correctly. This is a Ruger GP100. That would be the one I would recommend because it can take some higher pressured rounds than the Smith and the Taurus. Although the modern Smiths do pretty well, some of the older Smiths had problems with higher pressured rounds, so I would definitely consider a Ruger. This one's on its way back to Ruger to measure the cylinder gap in the barrel and the forcing cone and see if we can get some more consistent velocities out of this one. And then another honorable mention, and I actually carry this honorable mention, but I wouldn't consider it my top 10. This is a 45 Super, my Glock 21. 460 roll incomes I consider about the same. You don't want to have something that you're not 100% reliable in. And I've got this one to run really, really well, but it's always got that little 1% doubt in my mind. Though I have put a hard cast bullet, three of them actually, through a grizzly bear skull with this firearm. Another honorable mention are your AR caliber huge calibers, like the 450 Bushmaster, the 458 SOCOM. They don't make the list because their rounds are just so expensive. They can be finicky, and you have to buy high quality parts in order to get them to run correctly. So, and building them yourself is, is really good, but if you find a cheap one, you're not going to save any money over buying a cheaper 4570. So they didn't make the list for that. So here we are. Number 10, your Smith & Wesson 44 Magnums, particularly the 629 Classic. This is a 5-inch barrel gun. My buddy let me borrow one for a video on the channel. Go check that video out here. And we did some ballistics out of it. It gets just below box velocities on everything with the 5-inch barrel, because... 6 inch barrel is what they test things in, but it's very smooth, the recoil is, is manageable, the gun is lighter than a Ruger, and you get 6 shots. I wouldn't do the Combat Magnum series because you only get 5 shots and it's on a smaller frame, it's going to hurt. But the 629 Classic, or the 629 6 inch, or the 629 Classic 5 inch, that would be my number 10 bear gun. Awesome gun. Like I said, I wouldn't want to run a steady load of stuff that it's not rated for like the Buffalo Bore 340 grain plus P plus or the heavy 305 grains. In that firearm, I'd want to run the 255 grain Keiths or the Underwood Extreme Penetrators that are 220 grain, and they will still adequately, more than adequately, penetrate a bear skull or even body shots do a lot of damage. Number nine. Number nine is very similar, same manufacturer, Smith & Wesson, your 460 or 500 revolvers. So your big X-frame revolvers that are just huge, they're at number nine. They're great for one shot. You're probably not going to get a follow-up shot if the bear is charging from close range. That bear is inside of 15 yards and charging you. You're going to get one shot if you're lucky, and, and you're going to get one shot if you're good. Not even lucky. You're going to get one shot if you're good. So your recoil is enough to throw the whole thing off for a follow-up shot at that close distance. So if you're carrying a 500 Smith & Wesson on your chest, you might want to carry a 44 mag or 10 millimeter backup on your hip. Just so in case the bear's on top of you, do that. You better make that one shot. The ammo is expensive, but between the two, I would choose the 460 in the five inch barrel configuration. I've shot it on the channel. And the reason why I would choose that is because you can shoot 460, but you can afford to practice with your 454 Casul and your 45 Long Colt. So you could actually practice a lot with the gun and get really familiar with the firearm and then maybe not have as hefty of recoil 
and you can use 454 Casul or 45 Long Colt loads that are plus B as bear defense as well if you can't handle the recoil of the Smith & Wesson Magnums. So 500 and 460, that is number nine. Number eight is your Glock 10 millimeters. And everybody is gonna be surprised that I ranked it at number eight. And the reason why I rank your Glock 10 millimeters at number eight is you are sacrificing power for speed and accuracy. Not that much power, but still a lot. The most power I've ever got out of this was with some Underwood ammo that was overpressured at about 950 foot pounds, but I was having blown primers with that lot number and stuff. I should contact Underwood about that. But the Glock Model 40 would be the one to choose. It's much better than the 20 because you have this heavy slide that really takes out the recoil and people go, well, that's too heavy. Well, it's not as heavy as some of the revolvers on this list. And my wife carried it seven months pregnant up to Thunderbird Falls and back the other day and carried it along the coastal trail the other day. I have the 6.5 inch KKM barrel in here so that I can shoot hard cast safely, repeatedly. You get 15 rounds, excellent, excellent bear defense firearm. Your Glock 10 millimeters, if you prefer the 20, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with the 20, I just prefer the 40. I did get a 29 for backup. I would also, if you're much more a Springfield fan, I would still list Springfield 10 millimeters at number eight, along with the Glocks. They, they don't, they're more snappy on the recoil the Springfields are. But if, if they fit your hand better than Glocks, they are decent weapons. You do need to make sure your front sight doesn't fly off like Chooks did. Actually, Chooks, when we did the comparison video, Chooks' front sight fell off in the box on the way home. That is something you can't have in bear country. And if you get the 5.25 inch Springfield, you have that big hole in the top of the slide to save weight. And they really shouldn't have put that there. They should have just made the gun heavy because here in Alaska, you can get all sorts of dirt and stuff in that hole and you're not even noticing it. You'll need a good holster that covers that hole. And most of the time with these guns, like even with the Glock 40, the holsters I buy are Glock 20 and 21 holsters and the six out this much. And the same thing's true for the XDMs. You're gonna have to find a holster for the XDM 5.25, which is a great firearm, but take out the front sight, find a holster that covers it, and then you should be all right. Seven on the list are your Ruger 44 Mag revolvers. And that is why you carry 44 Magnum. Or the big super Red Hawk 454 Casul. I have a two and a half inch Ruger. You guys can see it's unloaded. I like the four inch Red Hawk. That would be my number one choice. I got a deal on this one used. So the Ruger revolvers are very robust. Fire when dirty, can handle all of the hot rounds. There's a much thicker back strap here on the frame, much thicker and heavier frame. The Ruger revolvers can, they're just tough. I have this one in the Andrews custom leather holster and it is just great. Two number six, and this is going, it's going to be controversial. Your hunting rifle, whatever you are hunting with. This is a seven millimeter rim mag. Remington 700, but if you're hunting with a 270 or a 25 odd six or 30 odd six, as long as you're using a bullet that is okay to use in Alaska that will take down any game, then your hunting rifle is better than your pistols that you have on you. If you're carrying your hunting rifle in your hands and a bear comes out, you're not going to drop your rifle and pull out a handgun. That is too slow, number one. Number two, it's less powerful, your handgun is. Number three, it's not as accurate as shooting a rifle. So you're gonna throw your rifle up, you're gonna shoot, work the bolt, shoot, work the bolt, shoot, work the bolt, and it doesn't matter if you're using a 270, 7 mm 8, 6.5 Creedmoor, 308. If you hit the grizzly bear right here, right here, right here, he's gonna be in a world of pain and stop coming. Now, Obviously, for you know a real short charge situation, you might be hip firing it. That's happened before. I've heard people doing that. For a longer charge situation, when I was in Georgia preparing to come to Alaska, there were guys at the range 
We were shooting their 338s, and I had just traded for a 338 Savage. And they told me they got left in the wilderness during 9 11 because the planes couldn't fly to come pick them up. And they got left in the wilderness, and basically, they got charged by a grizzly bear from 100 yards away, and they were shooting their 30 odd sixes and, and seven mags and 300 mags at it, and it finally stopped at their feet. Charged them from 100 yards away, and it stopped right at their feet, right in front of them, is where it fell. So, shot placement, that kind of thing. They said it ended up taking nine rounds of the various calibers they were using. If you're carrying your hunting rifle in your hands, when you go to the range, you need to do drills where you're shooting, bolting, and then shooting, bolting as fast as you can here in Alaska. Those are drills you need to do with your ammo. And the right ammo for Alaska, Nosler Petitions, Hornady GMX, Trophy Bonded Tip Bullets, Trophy Bonded Bear Claw, Nosler Acubons, Barnes Tipped TSX, Barnes LRX. If you're using anything that'll keep its core together and it's not going to shatter on impact, then your hunting rifle is an extremely good bear defense weapon. A lot of people use 30 odd 6 and 270 and 6.5 Creedmoor even for caribou hunting, so they don't want to carry a big heavy magnum. The odds of running into a bear are pretty slim. I've never seen one while hunting for another game. I've only seen bears when fishing or hunting for bears. So at number 10, we had the Smith & Wesson 44 Magnum 629 Classic. At number 9, we had the 500 or 460 Smith & Wesson X-Frames. At number 8, we had our Glock 10 millimeters or Springfield, if you couldn't even buy a Springfield with a good conscience with the, what they did in the 2A community in Illinois. Then we had the Ruger revolvers. Then we had your hunting rifle at number 6. Number 5. The Ruger Toklat 454 Casual. This is the perfect balance between weight and power and revolver. Just a huge revolver, but not so big that you can't handle it. It does hurt to shoot with bare loads, but you can get used to that. You can run 45 Colts through it to practice if you really need to and you need to find something cheap. It's an excellent, excellent revolver. Chuk has one. I've shot it. It goes straight through the chronograph because I shot my chronograph with it. It's awesome. I would highly recommend the Ruger 454 Casual. Excellent weapon. That would be my number one handgun on the list. Number four. Number four is your heavy hunting rifles. These aren't calibers like 30 odd six or seven millimeter weight. These are 375 Ruger. This is a Howell 1500, 20 inch barrel in 375 Ruger. We shot a pork shoulder the other day. Look what that bullet did. Look at that bullet. It's pretty awesome. It's a 250 grain Hornady GMX. That bullet, it was pretty awesome. That's going to penetrate deeply, hold most of its weight, and still cut really, really well. My 338 Win Mag here would be considered the bottom of that. 338 would be considered the minimum of your heavy hunting calibers. Consider 300 mag like the heaviest of the mediums and a lot of guides would say this is your minimum for brown bear. 375 H&H is good, 416 Rigby, 458 Winchester Magnum, 460 Weatherby, there's several other 378 Weatherby, there's several other great calibers in there. You don't mind spending 120 bucks a box for ammo, which is way cheaper than getting mauled by a grizzly bear. Again, if you use these, you need to drill, carrying along, coming up at the range and firing and bolting, firing and bolting, firing and bolting quickly on a bare target so that you can defend yourself with a bolt action, you need to be quick. So they're number four because of their power and their accuracy, but their speed is what puts them at number four and not number one. Now this might get real controversial. Number three, your 12 gauge shotgun. A lot of people would consider this number one, I don't. We flipped a kayak and three boxes of shells plus the shells that were in the gun all got soaking wet. They did not fire. So you absolutely have to waterproof your shells. This would be my number one choice. This is a Remington 870. 
This is an older one that's very reliable. I've had it since I was a kid. My dad bought it for me to hunt with. I've bought the shorter barrel for bear defense and home defense. And then I have the longer barrel for hunting in the fall. Your shotgun is the number three choice because you can't get waterproof shells. Now, Warwolf Ammo makes waterproof shells for those of you that live in the lower 48. Howsomever, we can't get them in Alaska because of import-export laws. All the ammunition is shipped here on a barge, goes through import-export. 12 gauge, make sure you waterproof your shells. I would use primer sealant around the primer, and then I'd probably use candle wax up on the top. And then you need to test it that you didn't build any overpressure. So definitely something you want to go test. 12 gauge is great, the power is there. I mean, the Black Magic Magnum Brennicky Slugs, 3,500 foot-pounds of energy. The power is definitely there. Howsomever, you do have to make sure your slugs don't get wet. And what are you doing in Alaska when you're carrying a 12 gauge shotgun for bear defense? You're hiking. I've done it mountain biking. You're fishing, wading in the river fishing. Your shotgun's gonna get wet. If you slip and fall on those slippery rocks, your shotgun's gonna get immersed, okay? Kayaking, boating, canoeing, all sorts of things you do, pack rafting in Alaska, hiking. All things, sorts of things you do in Alaska, the gun's gonna get wet, the ammo's gonna get wet. You can't have ammo that isn't reliable. So if you live in the lower 48, check out the Warwolf ammunition and their slug that is completely waterproof. But 12 gauge is number three. You got the power, you got the speed, you got the accuracy with the slug. Only with slugs, not with buckshot. But you get the power, the accuracy, the speed with a 12 gauge. Number two, this is gonna be real controversial again, your AR-10 platform, 338 Federal preferably. So your AR-10 platform and 338 Federal. Ammunition's not that hard to find. It's around here in Alaska. You can hand load it very well. You can get 20 rounds of something that has better than 308 power and penetrating power on a grizzly bear. And with a good muzzle brake, you can keep your shots down just like you would with an AR-15. Maybe not quite as easily as an AR-15, but you can keep the shots down and you can put several shots on target in the time that you need to that are extremely powerful. Way more powerful than any of your handguns. That being said, if all you have is a AR-10 and 308, put in some 147 grain bimetal jackets, you've got 20 or 25 round Magpul magazines or 20 round Lancer magazines, throw that in there. And your rifle, if it's a great feeding, reliable AR, it will feed really, really well and you will dump a lot of energy on target and those 147 grain M80 ball bimetal jackets will go straight through a grizzly bear skull easily. You're going to poke a lot of holes in them, racking and stacking mags, and you will be okay. The 308 and the 308 platform, there's some new calibers in that platform like 4570 Automax and stuff like that we'd have to hand load for here in Alaska because we probably couldn't get the ammo here, but those should be extremely good rounds for Alaska and you have 20 or 25 rounds you're stacking it on top you can throw it up quickly you don't have to worry about bolting or levering it's really really a great platform I'd like to see the 338 Federal make a comeback with some 210 grain nozzle partitions in that round and you could just stack them on top of each other I've shot a 338 Federal AR-10 I've shot a 308 like the Desert Tech NDR and it's great so you could do a lot of things with the 308 up here. You could hunt caribou. And like I said, if you're using a good quality hunting bullet that stays together, it'll do just fine on a brown bear skull if that's what you have to take it with. So number two is your 308 AR, really 338 Federal AR-10 would be the best choice. Number one, 4570. 4570. 4570 is number one. The rounds are much more waterproof, although I need to test that on the rounds I got. But this is the Henry X model. It's just an excellent, excellent firearm. See, it's unloaded. And the Henry X is just really smooth, 18 and a half inch, very lightweight. Kicks like a mule with the bare loads. The sights need to be a little bit better. They're hard to, they are hard to throw up a little bit. Um, so I'm probably going to red dot this. Henry or XS Systems needs to come out with a scout scope 
The scout scope system is probably the quickest system to me. Mount or even a forward mounted red dot would be extremely quick. So I like the Henry that has the tube here that I can, uh, that locks in really nice and I can unload it, load it quickly without having to run every round through the chamber for safety. And I like the Henry because it doesn't have that lawyered up push button safety right here like a Marlin does. I had the 1895 Cowboy, great firearm, never any trouble, but it, it was a Rimlin, you know, a Remington made Marlin and it, they just don't have the quality that they used to have in Marlin. So I got me a Henry instead and big loops, nice for having gloves, fishing gloves and stuff like that on. So this is kind of a medium sized loop in the Henry X. But the Marlin GBL and the Marlin SBL, those are awesome, awesome. The Trapper, they're all awesome firearms. I would definitely go with that. 4570, you know, 3,000 to 4,000 foot-pounds of energy, depending on what you're using. And excellent load, great penetration. And that's why it's been the staple for guide guns and bear protection in Alaska for decades. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this content, let me know in the comments. If you disagree with my choices, let me know in the comments. Patreon, Instagram, Facebook, Subscribestar. Go check us out on all those places. God bless. Take care. We will see you at the range.